everyone. My name is Noel Andaverde and I recently joined Globant as a web UI developer. Today, I will be sharing with you a short guide about how you can use the D3 library in your React projects. Before we begin, it is important to tell you that I will be assuming you know how the component lifecycle works, what refs are, as well as what a selection and update pattern are in D3. A lot of the examples you will find online about D3 use bar charts. So to, to do this a little bit more exciting, I've decided to use a tree map instead. Tree maps, as you can see on the screen right now, are more complex than bar charts in certain ways. Hence, I've decided to split this video into two parts. On the first one, we will cover the main topic of this video, which is one approach that you can use to integrate D3 with React. And on the second one, I will try to teach you how to make the tree map that we're going to insert into a component. So let's jump straight to it. First, head over to the following URL, which will take you to a code sandbox template that I've set up for you. This template already contains all the dependencies that we need, D3 and React, and also a couple of JS and CSS files that we will be using to build and style a graph. In case it's not already there, create a new file called graphicscontainer.js inside this source folder. And on it, create a new React component. Don't forget to import the styles as well. This is what we will be returning for now. In order to be able to use D3 from within the component, we have to complete three basic steps. The first one is create a component, we already did, with a ref on the element to use as a container. That means a container for our graph. Then read the ref as a side effect and run the D3 code by either running it directly from within the effect or calling a function, or instantiating a class that has a method that renders a graph. Here I will be sticking to the second approach, because I think it's a much cleaner one, and also uh, it helps us to keep the concerns separate. So let's complete the first step. Why do we need the ref? Well, D3 works directly with the DOM instead of the virtual DOM, as React does. Since refs acquire their value post render, we need a side effect for that. As a simple test, let's select and print out the node in our ref. From the app.js file, import the graphics container component and place it inside the app div. Let's see if it's in the console. Yeah, seems like it. All right, we are done with the steps one and two. On step three, we will call a function or a class method that receives the refs node, initializes and renders the graph. The function we're calling is a class method that belongs to the trimap class, and it is, by the way, called render. Let's import this file from the app.js file. Then pass it as a prop to the graphics container component. We will call this prop graphic. However, TreeMaps or any other graph for that matter feed on data. I've already prepared a dataset for you. It is a CSV file that contains entries of sales per month of a product with different flavor types. We will fetch this dataset and run a preprocessing step to cast the values of the month columns into numbers so that we are able to perform calculations on them. Let's copy the URL to this file and then pass it as a prop to the graphics container component. We also need a second side effect to fetch the dataset. For that, we will use the D3 CSV function, which takes a URL and our own transformation function as parameters. The transformation function is what allows us to preprocess the raw fields. 
Here, we are merging all the properties of the row R with a new object that contains the month numbers as keys and their values transformed into numbers. To render the tree map, we need to update the state and have the second side effect run once the data has been fetched. Let's import the use state hook and initialize the state with an object containing a data property. And also, yeah, it's a typo here. Inside the second side effect, make sure the data property is not falsy and instantiate the new graphic providing the node and data as arguments. Then, call the rendered method of the class instance. Finally, destructure the URL prop and reload the sandbox. Looks like it's not rendering. Well, that's because we should have used from entries and not entries. There you go. What you are seeing right now is essentially a two-dimensional representation of the leaves of a tree data structure. The leaves are grouped together recursively according to the number of levels on the tree. Such levels also correspond to the qualitative attributes such grouping was based on. In this exercise, the rows of the CSV file were grouped together in the following order of attributes. Year, description, and weight. The space between the leaves helps us identify the groups, while the color indicates the weight of the product. Let's now have a look at the render method of the tree map. This method calls other methods that calculate and return the data structure for the graph, and then selects the container obtained by the ref in our component to create an empty nested selection onto which the data is bound. The data binding returns a new selection that was used to append the HTML elements of the graph, as well as assign them styles and further descriptive labeling. Cool, now you know a quite effective approach to using D3 inside React components. Let's again summarize what we did. First, we gave a ref to the element we wanted to use as a container for our graph. Second, we fetched the required data and updated the state once it's ready. We then listened, so to speak, to these straight property updates in order to run the D3 code that does everything we need to have the graph displayed inside the component. These steps might help you to find a workflow that better suits your needs. Right now, this component is completely responsible for the data the graph is feeding on. However, since both React and D3 are quite flexible, you can have both the component and the graph re-render themselves if the data is coming from another source, a component that filters or merges data, for instance. Right now, you're probably wondering if the graph we've just displayed appeared out of magic. After all, the only thing we did was to import a class and call a method, right? Well, not quite. D3, as well as any other library or framework out there, is a tool. It is our work to leverage it to create from the most simple to the most complex stuff you can imagine. The tree map showcased in this video was built following a process that could be separated into three major layers. A nest, a hierarchy, and a layout. Tree maps, as well as any other part hold relationship graph, require data in a hierarchical format. If you remember, the CSV file we looked at is just a big bunch of rows. There's nothing hierarchical about it, at least yet. So this data set is what we will be nesting, converting into hierarchy, and making a layout off of. Go back to the code sandbox and open the trimmap.js file. Delete the following methods completely. Create layout, nest data, and create hierarchy and layout. Before we begin to code them again, please note that a property called nesting order has been hard coded on the class. In practice, you'll most likely want to make this and other properties dynamic. This has been done here for the sake of simplicity, although you might argue that this has become quite convoluted already. Alright, the first thing we need to do is nest the data. Please recall we passed the container node and the data as arguments for the constructor. Inside the constructor, two properties with the same names hold their values. Below the create layout method, create a new method called nest data. 
The reduce method will save us some typing by assigning a new key with a value equal to each array member to the D3 nest. This is each level's grouping attribute. The rollup method of the nest executes a callback function that we can use to calculate a value property for each of the members of each level. We are calculating the accumulated sum over all of the months, so we need to access the rows and the property names. This function could virtually return anything, and whatever is executed in it is application dependent. Lastly, the entries method receives the data to be grouped. The result is an array of objects with a length equal to the number of unique values of the first attribute in the nesting order array found in the dataset. The pattern repeats as you dig deeper into the objects. By the way, do not forget to make data an argument for this function. Below the last method, create a new one called create hierarchy and layout, where we will first destruct the dimensions extracted from the container generate the nested data, and then the hierarchy itself. The D3 hierarchy requires a root node, that's why we are adding a root property here. In addition, we would like each node of the hierarchy to have a value equal to the sum of the values of each children, as well as sorting it to make more sense of our dataset once we display it as a graph. Again, write the method below named createLayout. In here, we will use the D3 tree map layout to calculate the position and bounding coordinates of each node. These attributes are what we use to locate and resize the HTML elements we render by using the absolute positioning and inline styles. The inner and outer padding allow us to specify the size of the spacing between the leaves and groups. Let's rename this call right here and console log the layout. If you inspect the layout and inquire on the children property of each node, you will notice that every single one of them has properties called x0, y0, x1, and y1. These properties are the result of C3 partitioning the area of the container we provided into areas proportional to each node's value property. There's obviously more to the code in this class, but I leave that for you to explore, as well as substituting the class we gave to the component with a tree map with transitions. Have a look at its code and see what's different. I hope you have all found this video useful. Please feel free to reach out if you have any questions. Thanks for watching.